Why? I, I couldn't really definitively vocalize um, other than I've always been pretty fascinated with the, you know, with dark stories with, uh, um, and that runs the gamut from like uh, maybe, you know, mysteries can, many mysteries can be seen as horror films because there's an inherent, you know, like there's a killer usually and, uh, and deaths and things like that it's it's all in degrees that people perceive as being being horror um, but yeah I think the gateway was was monsters I, I still really really like monsters and monsters to me were kind of like the bridge between fantasy and and horror because you would have something like Godzilla or uh, any of the other giant monsters and there's you know like you wouldn't really classify them as, as a horror film they would be monster films, um, but you know that kind of bridge over to horror is, is pretty close because then you have monsters that are uh, uh, more, let's say, visceral and, and gory. You have you know werewolves, American Werewolf in, Lo in London, and Howling, and, and all of this, and and so it kind of like bridges, and there's there's increments of, of horror within within that particular kind of thing. I won't be the first one that says this, but horror generally is perceived by by the majority of people as as being somewhat uh, outsider, uh, an outsider interest, sort of like an, almost an antisocial interest. Horror fans have to continually, uh, not to their peer group, obviously, but they they have to continually um, explain why it is. They like horror. In no other genre do you have to explain why you like it. No one ever says, why do you like comedy so much? It's because it's funny. You know, like, uh, why do you like documentary so much? Because I want to learn about the world. And it's, it's a difficult um, verbalization as to why you like horror. Horror fans will experiment. They'll go out and they will watch everything. They'll, it doesn't matter that it costs nothing to make. It doesn't matter that nobody's in it that anyone's ever heard of, that it's made by someone who's never made a film before. Um, they will watch it. And, and in many ways, they're much more um, forgiving and experimental than the average person. And they're very friendly with each other. I mean, it's, it's an old adage, and I can't remember if it's... Stephen King or maybe Carpenter or something said, you know, all the horror creators, all the horror fans that they've ever met are very nice. And, you know, there's there's a prevailing theory that they sublimate all of their anger through, you know, fantasy. And so what's left is, you know, the, the best of themselves in many ways. It's a fascinating community. And that's a great one to be part of, you know. There's a lot of stuff being lost when when brick and mortar um, um, spaces go, and it's it's uh, a myriad of things. You know, one is that it's it's kind of a um, a clubhouse. We we many many times we'll get people coming up and they'll ask for a recommendation or they were, they just brought something back that they liked or didn't like or you know feel that they want to comment on it. And if there's other customers, it's like many many times they'll even though they've never met each other they'll join in the conversation. Um, that probably doesn't happen in, in tons of places, but 
when it comes to entertainment, let's say in, in bookstores or particular bookstores and in, in here, they'll they'll feel that they, they can do that. They can kind of express themselves and and um, be within um, uh, a social environment where, you know, ideas and, and opinions are, are exchanged. You miss a place where you can kind of like travel to. It's kind of, it, it becomes, I think, an oasis for people to come to and, and, and discuss things like... Um, because they may not have friends or peers that that share the same interests, but you know that they know that that people will have it here. So you miss that, and you also miss, in terms of a um, a well curated uh, video store, you you will miss a lot of titles. You know, the public perception is that everything's online, and a lot of things are online, but there's a lot more not online, and. People never really believe me when I say that, but I could probably point to easily a thousand, two thousand, three thousand titles that you will find very difficult to find online. You know that it'll be here, and many times they'll have supplemental material on it. So if you want to get beyond just watching the movie, you can. When everything is sacrificed for uh, convenience, you also lose the sense of value in those in those things. If you can get everything you you would want to. Um, even if it's just standard Hollywood fare. If you can get it at your fingertips and you can start watching it and it costs you nothing, then it has no value. So you will not necessarily devote the time uh, to something that isn't immediately gratifying to you. You know, when you go out and buy something, uh, whether it's music, books, uh, film, there's the act of purchasing. It has cost you money and so you will you will sit and you will experience something in its totality and many sometimes many times I mean there's been lots of times where I, I bought something and I haven't liked it the first time and uh, but god damn it I bought it and I spent money so I'm gonna I'm gonna check again and I will do it and in not in all cases obviously but in a lot of cases I've grown to really like whatever that is whether it's a, a music or a movie or a book and so uh, that loss of of intrinsic value is a real detriment, I think, to to really experiencing something. Increasingly, we place a, a larger uh, value on just volume. Not to put blame on anybody, but if there's an establishment that you like, that you like the idea of its existence, that you like, you know, what they're doing, you like all of that stuff, you have to frequent it. You can't kind of assume that it'll just stay in perpetuity uh, by itself and that other people will, will do it. You know, no one else will water your garden. You better do it yourself. Like it may cost maybe pennies more than going online, maybe be a little less convenient um, but you know I mean you go to the supermarket because it has the most food you don't go to the variety store because it has some food and it's it's convenient you know like you will take the the uh, the impetus of, of going out of your way if it's worth your while in terms of some things but not others so adopt that philosophy with with other things too